Stacy, thank you very much for coming on the show. There's all sorts of amazing Algorand updates out there. And I think we should just start right off the bat with uh, with some of those updates and, and start talking about them. So Algorand recently announced at Token uh, 2049 in Singapore that it would be moving to a more peer-to-peer gossip network, not relying on the relay nodes and incentivizing uh, you know, node running and uh, consensus participation. What led you all to this decision? When is it going to roll out and uh, how's it going to work? Yeah, so um, to the extent that we have ever been criticized about not being fully decentralized, it's typically around the relay nodes. Mm -hmm. And in particular, around the fact that not just anybody can be a, can run a relay node. You have to meet certain requirements, certain technical requirements, um, and uh, and the foundation uh, enforces those uh, requirements. And so I think this is an attempt to again just push again the next step in our decentralization. So right now, as you know, we have kind of a you could call it kind of a hub and spoke model where every participation node is attached to, I think it is four relay nodes, and the relay nodes talk to each other. And so you go relay node to relay node and then back down to the participation node attached to that uh, relay node. And so this is a way to go from participation node to participation node in a kind of a, a gossip net, it's called. I, I, I always call it whisper net, and that's wrong. It's a gossip net kind of uh, network. Um, and right now, I think the way that they're thinking about it is that you can all now... Uh, as once it gets rolled out, you can use the relay node framework or you can use the gossip network framework. So we're going to make sure we don't, you know, deprecate one completely and go to the other one. We're going to be running them both simultaneously. And uh, there may be differences in speed and also maybe dis- differences in price. So we're, yeah, we're, this is kind of a no, no lose uh, uh, proposition, I think, for us. We're pretty excited about that. Yeah, that's it is truly exciting because I do believe that's probably been the biggest uh, point of criticism, uh, valid or not. I mean, it's still been definitely one of the biggest points of criticism, at least the relay nodes. So it's going to be more of an optional network where you could still opt to use the relays, maybe for mm-hmm. you know you know better uh, quicker speed or quicker transactions or whatever, uh, or you could choose to use the more decentralized peer to peer network. Is that correct? Yes, a hundred percent. Fantastic. And what about the consensus incentivization? Because that's been a thing that, you know, a lot of us that have listened to Silvio, there was, you know, he has a philosophy that was maybe sort of against that idea. So how did, uh, how did Algorand come to terms with that idea to implement it? Well, what happened really is that Silvio came to terms uh, with the idea. So, uh, you know, most other protocols have some kind of consensus mechanism, right? But he, and I, and this is, you know, we were talking a little bit about uh, him backstage. And this is, I think, is a a part of the ethos that he has, which is what you guys like about him, right? He's a very, he's kind of public citizen inclined, right? And he said, look, this is not a very, I mean, by design, this protocol is not, it's a lightweight, light touch protocol, right? When we started, when I wasn't here at the time, but when we started, you could you could run a participation node on a Raspberry Pi, right? Now, as it's gotten more performance, you do need to be running a high-end laptop, and it will now cost you something like $500 a month to be to be running a participation node. And so I think as the burden a little bit increased, he started recognizing that although the ethos is still very much there for him, that this is that you have a public citizen uh, duty, which is why we have the governors and voting on things for the governorship as well. But this is part of what you should be doing. But we're going to move to a way that recognizes that now that there is some cost, as it's become such a performant chain, there is some cost to running a participation node, and there should be some incentivization around it. Now, these things are a little bit related as well, right? Because if we're going participation node to participation node, if you can incentivize those, then you'll have more participation nodes and your gossip network will be better. And if you're going to go, you know, participation node to participation node, you want to make sure that you have enough and that you're decentralized enough. So I think those are, they're distinct, but they're not completely unrelated as ideas as, as uh, you know, that, that we're rolling out. Yeah, that makes sense. And it, it seems like it was a long journey on that, on that, uh, you know, philosophy change, so to speak. But I want to I want to ask about one more upgrade because it's maybe the biggest, maybe bigger than the consensus upgrade because it, it allows for millions of more developers to build on Algorand, and that's the new Algo Kit update that includes Python as a coding language, which I believe is maybe the second most popular coding language in the world. And it, I, I think that's a massive move for Algorand, honestly. But could you speak a little bit more to that? Why was that decision made? How will it change Algorand? And, and what are you excited to see built using Python? Yeah, I mean, I cannot, I mean, I just could not be more excited about this. And again, if I can just invoke my founder a little bit, he tells this very um, 
funny kind of fable about uh, Venice, you know, and Venice is a sea warring city state back, you know, a thousand years ago. And it would fight like the Greek island city states and the other, 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 you know, city states of Italy, uh, which would be the analogy there would be us bickering with Solana or whatever. Right. Um, but actually if they looked over their shoulder, there's a whole entire continent of Europe behind them to be conquered. Right. And so when we think about Python, that's what we think about. It's all of those web two developers. It's all of those corporate developers, full stack developers that are used to building in Python and they want to build in Python. They're interested in web three, but they're not going to, you know, they've got good jobs and they make money and they're successful. They're not going to go out and like learn some new language that they don't know what it is and, you know, take a, take a lark on it. But if they can uh, write in, write smart contracts in a language that they already know, then that is really going to be, we think, a way to kind of bring them into the funnel, you know, as, as, as the marketers say. Now, other protocols have have added Python to their library, I will say, but we are we are bringing the the ability to write a smart contract in Python, and it's not anywhere else in Web three. So we're pretty, yeah, you know, we're pretty excited about that. I would say, um, and then consensus too. You know, that's not going to be something that we roll out next month. It's right now. It's a very unreadable document of a list of all the game playing and things that could possibly go wrong, and what are the cryptographic and incentive structures to make sure that those things don't happen. I mean, there, a lot of thought needs to go into something like this, um, but we are just moving forward like to, to um, both of these things. I can definitely say that, you know, I tried, all right, once I saw the news drop of Algorand accepting Python, I was like, you know, I, I should go try to learn this. I should really, you know, just start trying to learn how to code and stuff. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not there yet, obviously, but I can understand that how hard it would be if you are trying to learn something new rather than just having something that a lot of people already know and how that could really help adoption and growth for the network. You just watched a clip from episode 75 of The Next Block. If you enjoyed this clip, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. We have a bunch of great guests coming on, including Mark Yusko, the founder of Morgan Creek Capital, Anthony Scaramucci, the founder of Skybridge Capital, and so many other great names in the coming weeks. So be sure to subscribe. It definitely helps us get more great names in the future and ping that notification bell so you never miss a thing. Check out the video description for ways to support the podcast, including checking out our sponsors, and hopefully we will catch you in the next video. Thank you.